great city. So without anything further from me, I'm going to ask our mayor to come and give greetings at this time. God bless you. They, they, when I walked in, they paused me, you know, who do I give this offering envelope to, you know? I want to make sure I leave. You know, think about it for a moment. Uh, Matthew 8 and 26. Uh, Jesus healed all day, uh, showed his disciples miracles. And in the process, as he crossed the Sea of Galilee, laid down for a moment and the winds and the water became turbulent and his disciples became afraid and they woke him and after all that they witnessed he did they were not convinced yet and he asked the question and he made the statement oh ye of little faith People focus on that aspect of that chapter and verse. But there was another part that many people missed. They missed how important the Sea of Galilee was. Around that sea, the fishermen would fish. And they would be able to have their entire livelihood dependent on the common of the waters. And they would go into the village that surrounded Galilee to make sure that from that sea that they were able to ensure that their family would prosper. And I say to you, those of you who are the benefactors of this great man, everything is fine with Pastor Fine. Amen. You are in the boat with him. And you have benefited from Pastor Fine and his lovely wife, Sister Fine. But don't miss the fact that right here, surrounding this amazing ship, is the sea of uncertainty around you. And each time you pray, each time you rejoice, each time you sing, you are calming the waters around here. Throughout the years of knowing uh, this amazing church, giving me one of your children, uh, Karen Ford, who has been with me throughout my entire journey and has moved up through the administration. But I remember years ago when there was a real move towards immigration and ensuring people were able to sign up for the immigration status. Right here, we planted the seed. And look at how many judges have come out of this church, sitting on the benches, making the determination on ensuring that our laws are applied correctly and fairly. And look at how many services from food to education. This is more than just this vessel. You are common the seas that are surround not only the borough of Brooklyn, where our amazing Brooklyn borough president, I always say, no, so you have the second best job in politics, being the borough president of Brooklyn. But it cascades throughout this entire city. Men and women who are members of this church are part of every level of government, private industry, education, health care. During COVID and the fear that came with COVID, members of this church went out and calmed those waters. Calmed those waters. When gun violence were pervasive and uncertain, right here along the avenues, the streets, there were men and women of this church that were willing to go out and have a church without borders and a church without walls. The years that this pastor has poured into us is clear to me. Everything is fine with Pastor Fine. <laughs> he has calmed us for so many years. And I cannot tell you the level of confidence you have. Just a few weeks ago, he joined other men and women of the faith as we prayed together to deal with the migrant crisis that our city is facing and how do we give a level of 
humanitarian action that we have to do basically on our own. But I want to assure you, 30-something years ago, God placed on my heart to be the mayor of the city of New York. And I said, why me? Because it was very clear that there was a symbolic moment that was coming into vision. Only God can take a young man who made mistakes in life and was arrested. A man who struggled in school and was dyslexic and rejected, and now I'm elected to be the mayor of the most important city on the globe. That's the power of prayer. And I don't care what anyone say. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. If we don't see what is happening in our city and country right now, an African tribe will, would ask the question, not how are you and good morning, they would say, how are the children? So let's ask ourselves, if you don't believe it's time to pray, then ask yourself, how are the children? They are using fentanyl and cannabis as they start their day in school. How are the children? They're on social media learning how to subway surf and losing their lives through it, uh, hurting, harming themselves. How are the children? They're dealing with depression, suicidal thoughts. How are the children? Young boys are carving highways of death with nine millimeter bullets, taking the lives of other young people. How are the children? If you don't think it's time to pray, then ask the question, how are the children? And if you, the children are not fine, then our city is not fine. And this pastor understood it for so long. Let me tell you what type of man of God he is. Many people come inside the houses of worship, and they do just that. They are worshipers. Pastor Fine is a practitioner. Doctors don't go to medical school to learn how to do the philosophies of medicine. They go to heal and practice medicine. Lawyers don't go to law school to learn the principles of law. They go to practice law. When we come to our houses of worship, particularly this great house of worship, we don't go here just to learn the concept and philosophy of Jesus Christ. We go to practice what he preaches. And this pastor has practiced what he has preached for years. Living symbol of the greatness of God. And many people ask me, you know, Eric, being the mayor of the city of New York is the second most difficult job in politics. I say, when does the hard part start? Hard is coming to America and leaving your loved one at home and eking out a living and making sure that you can bring them and be a part of the American dream. Hard is picking cotton from sunup to sundown, delivering your babies on the field and go back and pick cotton again. Hard is me and my mother raising six children in the city betraying, abandoning her, not giving her the resources that she deserved. We know what hard is. We know what hard is. But hard become easy if you believe in God. God did not put me on this journey to say we're not going to be with you all the way through. Our city is recovering, folks. Don't let anyone fool you. I committed to reducing violence. We're doing that. I committed to returning jobs to the city. 99% of them have returned. I committed to making sure we'd be economically stable. We have a double A bond rate in the city. I committed to get people back on our subway system. We have 4 million riders capping out. People are coming back. 56 million tourists, 65 million of this year. Having employment in place. Navigated COVID, navigated crime. Now we're navigating asylum seekers, 120,000 in our city without any real financial support. But we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Because this is who we are. And we're going to get through it. But this is a city of men of God. And we've had a man of God for decades preaching and pouring it into us the powers that we love. And I don't know what anyone believes or says. But I know one thing, this position suits him as well as that beautiful suit he's wearing today. Congratulations to you, Pastor. Many more years. So on behalf of 8.3 million people, whereas faith is the driving force of any great mission, and as Reverend Dr. Fine reflects on all of us, his life 
and accomplishments, including leading church teams in important missions to Barbados, Grenada, Haiti, Jamaica, and St. Vincent. I'm proud to applaud his commitment to elevate this great church and great people of God for more than four decades in ministry. I'm pleased to join Reverend Dr. Fine's family, friends, and con con congregation in recognizing the positive impact he has made on so many New Yorkers. I, Eric Adams, the mayor after David Jenkins, do give you <laughs> this proclamation. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Winton Fine Day. Congratulations.